Hi, I'm going to talk about the hardest classes that I took for my first semester. If you don't know who I am, my name is Emma Jean. I am currently going through x-ray school or in medical radiology, if you like to call it. I am a student going through the program. It is my first year. So I will place a disclaimer in the box below. I just want to let you know that I am, again, a student going through x-ray school at a program. It is my first year. So please go with the information that your teacher is providing you with if you are a student. Um, if you're just watching this for educational purposes, also do your own research as well as look for the most updated information. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start talking about the hardest classes that I took within my first quarter of school. Across the board, my classmates and I pretty much had the same feelings of what were the hardest classes that we went through in school. One being principles of radiography and the second one is medical procedures of radiography, lecture. So I say lecture and I emphasize on that because I actually take two of the medical radiology procedures classes, one being lecture and the other one being lab. So lab is being on hands-on. That one I'll make a separate video about because that was the most nervous one that I felt in class, but not necessarily the hardest one. So just to say again that the hardest classes were principles of radiography and medical radiography lecture procedures. Jeez, that was a handful. I couldn't even blah. Okay, so if you see me looking down, I do have notes because I don't want to be talking about this too much. I want it to be like a comparison side to side because I feel like they're very different, but they work together as being separate classes, if that makes sense. To compare it for different classes, because at least for my required classes that I had to take before going to the program, I had to take physiology and anatomy. I'll link up the video up here of the classes that were required for me to take before getting into the program. Again, it is different for everywhere, but that's how it is for me, at least in California. Still, if you're taking, going to be applying for classes or going to a program, it might be slightly different, but I wouldn't think that there would be that many differences. So to compare those classes, I feel like principles is just like psychology. What? No. I feel like principles is like physiology. There's a lot of thinking to it. It's a lot of like, there's no memorization at all, which is how I think that procedures and anatomy are similar in that aspect. Going back to principles, how it's like physiology, you really have to think about it. Yes, you can read all the information and you can take notes, you can record the teacher, you can go back to the recordings and stuff like that, but you really have to be able to take that information and apply it into the real world. I'm gonna give you an example here. I am going to have it for the question of what is the greatest attenuator? Attenuator is basically the intensity of the x-ray beam of which it goes through matter. So I had a question that gave me the options of muscle, fat, and air. So which one is the greatest attenuator? And when I'm thinking about it and I went over the notes and I went over the lecture and listened to him, I remember that bone is the greatest attenuator, right? So in the order, it is bone, muscle, fat, then air. But when I'm looking at the answers, it didn't give me bone as an option. So that's when you really have to think about the information that they're asking you and what questions they provide as well. Out of those answers, it's going to be muscle because bone is not listed. Bone, muscle, fat, and air in that order. And since bone is not there, the next, <laughs> I'm not trying to flip you off. The next answer would actually be muscle. That's an example. Another one that um, is in that same category of information is what is the least attenuator? Again, Again, um, it's going to be the x-ray intensity that goes through matter. It gave me options of perineal fat, um, pericardial fat, psoas muscle, and then the lung, so a rated lung. And again, we look at that, it doesn't say bone, muscle, air, fat, right? It doesn't say those options. When you think about it, you can take off the first part of the word out of that question. It's not very relevant. You can take that out. And then it comes down to two of the answers being fat, one of them being muscle and one of them being lung. It doesn't have those four parts that I told you, but when you think about it and you take a picture of a lung and you see it come up in the screen, when you look at it, what does it consist of mostly? Air. So air in that order of the four is the least attenuator. So that would be the answer to that question. Going over the topics that I learned, it was a lot of material. We go through two chapters each week, two to three depending. So if it's short, we'll go through three, but it's usually two. But even though it's those two chapters within each week, it's a lot of information to take. 
So we learned about like the electricity, electromagnetism, starting off as a first chapter, like more of the intro. Then we really got into the x-ray tube, its components, x-ray production, filtration, beam restriction. We talked about grids as well. As you can see, that's a lot of little things that come up. And our last test was also cumulative. So he told us which chapters would be on the test, which was like, oh, thank God. But it's, you know, you have to be able to take all the information that they just give you and take the important pieces and parts of it for you to remember it and retain that information. You can read as much as you can. You can go over the lectures again because they are recorded. We can watch them again. But I think the best way of how I got through the class was being in study groups, being able to talk it out because I've noticed that if you talk it out with other students and you try and pinpoint those little sections that are confusing, when you hear someone talk it out or when you hear yourself talk it out, it makes more sense and you're able to retain the information more. Because my program is hybrid, we also meet up in Zoom. So we'll make up like a Zoom class or a Zoom call and we'll just join and also talk through there too. Especially for me, since I do live quite a bit far from the school, it's easy for me to jump in the Zoom calls and talk it out with them as a way to study for the class. Okay, so the second hardest class was the medical radiography procedures. That one, again, I relate it to anatomy. It's more memorization, but you do also have to think about it a little bit more than you would with anatomy. For example, um, it, we would talk about like looking over images, right? And we would say, what view or projection is this? Is this AP, anterior, posterior? Is this lateral? Is this oblique, medial or lateral oblique? Is this going to be a position where a patient would be laying down? Are they gonna be upright? Upright? <laughs> Are they gonna be upright or erect? Questions like that. For examples of this, he would show a lot of pictures as well. And I uh, would say things like, oh, what view would show the greater trochanter like in the shoulder or if it's in profile or what would what view would show if the lesser trochanter is in profile? What happens if both are not in profile, if they're being superimposed on top of one another? Another one, um, because I just learned about the cervical spine and the thoracic this week, is what view of the cervical spine would show the intervertebral Raymond. It's a lot about asking what view, what projection, he'll show pictures, you should be able to label the part. So there is some anatomy in there, but it doesn't take the majority of the class. It's more like you should know it for the basics and I'll ask a few questions about it because for different views, different parts of the body for anatomy will show up. For what I learned during the quarter was the chest, which was really cool. I was learning it as the first one because it is the most common x-ray performed. The AC joints, the SC joints, uh, moved on to shoulder, went on to the forearm, went down to the elbow. We did wrist, hand, fingers. Also went to the lower extremity. We went to the foot, we did the ankle, we did the toes, we did the knee the femur. I would say for this class, it's pretty straightforward. He would tell you what you need to know and things that eh, you don't really need to know because these are rarely performed, but you would it would still be good for your education to have this in your notes, have it with you just in case that it needs to be performed because you never know, especially for hospitals when it's trauma. Oh, you just have to be spot on and just be able to perform that exam without no questions asked. For that class, SID or KVP is not really asked that much. I would say maybe twice out of the whole quarter, it was asked about one body part just because that is something that we should be knowing. And that is something that we need to know when it comes to lab, because when we were performing, we obviously can't put it at a KVP or use technical factors yet. So instead we have to verbally say it, which is why I think he doesn't really ask for KVP when it comes to the lecture portion of class, because he wants us more to know about um, if we're able to visualize it, if we're able to apply this into our lab and into our clinic sites. All right, well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if you liked it and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.